good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from today. Uh, my name is Tara Schenkel, and today we're going to be going over SAGE Distribution and Manufacturing op Operations, or SDMO. Uh, and today we're going to have a heavy focus on the manufacturing features of SDMO. You can go ahead and move the slide. And so for our agenda, we are going to cover um, the SDMO manufacturing process. Now, for those of you joining us, um, we do have two other webinars that we've done on SDMO. One was on distribution, which was back in February. The other was on the, um, the dashboards and overall look and feel of SDMO, and that was uh, back in, I think, March or other way around, January and then March. Um, so you can join that on our website and I'll show you guys how to get there after, after our webinar. Uh, but for today, we're gonna just talk about, you know, what is SDMO and how can it be used for manufacturing? We're gonna cover market challenges that manufacturers are facing today, talk about some of the business challenges that you're also facing, and then actually hop right into our demo. So let's go ahead and get rolling. All right, so what is Sage Distribution and Manufacturing Operations? Sage Distribution and Manufacturing Operations was really designed to meet the needs of small and mid-sized manufacturers and distributors are really looking to, to drive their business transformation and wanting to monetize their manufacturing and operation processes. Um, SDMO is a pure cloud solution that really does allow manufacturers and distributors to just have a simpler and easy way to manage uh, their software. Next slide, please. And so for SDMO, a couple of things just to understand or know, it was native cloud from the first line of code that was written. Um, it's all done in a service-based architecture. It's got native web API framework. Um, within the software, it does do inventory, stock control, warehouse automation. It has the capabilities of doing resource management, does do procurement suppliers, has manuf manufacturing and shop floor control, uh, can handle sales and customers, distribution and fulfillment, and was basically designed for operational leaders really looking for a powerful and scalable solution. And so with Sage Distribution and Manufacturing Operations, or SDMO, you can actually have multiple locations, multiple warehouses, multiple sites, all in the same instance. Um, which allows you to really efficiently allocate resources, manage inventory, and coordinate it without having to hop in and out of different entities to do that. It also allows for real-time monitoring. So you can monitor your performance metrics, track your progress, and address issues. And because it is multi-site, for locations where you are managing multiple Warehouses, multiple sites, multiple companies, really having all of this information all in one system is super powerful. Um, and with Sage Distribution and Manufacturing Operations, it can be directly integrated with Sage Intact. So if you're already using Sage Intact for all your multi-company financial management pieces, now you can really leverage the strength of Intact for your consolidated reporting, intercompany and tran transactions, and compliance and governance. Um, so with SDMO, you do have the ability to directly integrate into an existing Sage Intact instance or create a new one from scratch. Next slide. And so what do we mean by this? Well, it just means that SDMO is independent, but can be connected. Okay, so on the left-hand side, you'll see the distribution and manufacturing pieces, which are all organic to SDMO. So anything related to inventory, bill of materials, costing, that's all gonna be managed on the SDMO side of things. Then when we look to our right, we've got our Sage Intact financials. So the financial management, regulatory fixed assets, the financial reporting, well, that's all gonna be done in Intact. And so where this really allows for a powerful solution is allowing your distribution and manufacturing sales team to work in a system that's built for those needs and allow the financial people to work in their financial system. It gives that great separation between the two. Next slide. But SDMO can also work standalone. And so because it can be standalone, it also allows you to stay with your accounting package of choice. So if you're using Sage 100, Sage 50, and QuickBooks, 
but you're looking for a cloud solution for your distribution and manufacturing, SEMO can still allow you to continue with those financial packages, but leverage the distribution and manufacturing that it contains to take advantage of that flexibility there. Um, and so for those of you on QuickBooks, SDMO would really stack up against Fishbowl. For those of you on Sage 50, it would either be, you know, bill of materials, or if you're using Mysis, it's a strong contender for that. And really for Sage 100, best fit is really gonna be for people that are doing bill of materials and light production management or light work order entry. Those are really prime, prime targets for people that should really consider SDMO. Next slide. All right, so what are some challenges that the manufacturing market is facing currently? First and foremost, it's estimated right now that there's gonna be 2.1 million manufacturing jobs unfilled in the US by 2030. Um, business to business e-commerce has really taken off over the last few years um, to the point of you know, 366% in growth. Uh, and a lot of that I think we can you know, thank COVID for. Uh, everybody was forced to stay at home and order online, but businesses too also had to follow suit. Um, manufacturing, right, wrong, or indifferent, was actually the most targeted sector for ransomware attacks in 2022. Um, and we saw a big uptick of that, you know, because in general, manufacturing people tend to be the ones that are a little bit further behind in IT protection, in IT services, and just overall network infrastructure. And so the other thing we've seen is the supply chain inflation and interest rates really becoming huge risks. Obviously, supply chain was all over the map during COVID. And so people were overbuying inventory because they couldn't get their hands on anything. Well, now they can get their hands on things, but it's far more expensive. And so the supply chain and the unpredictability of it has really caused a lot of challenges for manufacturers. All right, so what does change look like for manufacturers? So really for manufacturers to evolve and improve, they really need to have software that engages and, and is collaborative for employees. Modern manufacturing with mobility really helps these next gen workers meet their expectations. They want modern software. They want things that are in the cloud. They don't wanna have old clunky software that's installed on a local PC. Um, it results in happier and satisfied customers because if you're able to have a frictionless order process, well then customers are more likely to come back and buy more. Um, it's also giving them faster, consistent, confident answers. Agility, when you're in the cloud, it's a lot easier to adapt to emerging technology such as machine learning or artificial intelligence. And it also gives you speed to insight. Also with native cloud, you can avoid the expensive upgrades that come with a non-cloud solution or downtime if a you know, server dies or a workstation breaks, you're able to avoid all those hassles because native cloud means you can work from anywhere at any time. Quicker ROI, you get a quick deployment, you can start small and scale as needed. With SDMO, it's not an expensive, long, drawn out implementation. You can actually get up and running pretty quickly. And then lower operating expenses because you do not need a server or a workstation to run SDMO, and you do not have the expensive cost of reoccurring upgrades, you're able to really leverage some of those finances for other endeavors within your business. Common manufacturing business challenges that people are facing, um, really the tight labor market, being able to get good staff at a good rate and keep them engaged and on board. Inability to scale. They're not able to, to easily match the workflow or the volume of work they're getting because their technology is incapable of supporting it, which usually results in poor visibility to data, system performance limitations, and then of course, you know, the ever-changing supply chain weaknesses. There's just not enough out there. It's hard to get. It's inconsistent to predict when it's coming. So all of these things really do add to some of these challenges. Um, and so for that, these are things that can help. It can help you improve cycle times and workflows. So streamline workflows and increase productivity. It allows for improving your accuracy. It allows for improving inventory turns and reduce stockouts. Um, and also maintain healthy margins, get more orders out the door and quicker. So these are all areas where SDMO can help. 
having a faster database decisions, right? So with SDMO, you're able to align and cross function with your teams. You're also able to prioritize spending, cut costs and improve cash flow, provide unique and valuable insight, uncover potential supply chain savings and also strengthen supplier relationships. And of course, also with this, you can scale with the agility and gain resiliency, right? So embracing new ways of working. So you're able to have everything in the cloud, which gives you opportunities to really be mobile and agile with what you do. Gaining more time back. Everybody wants more time back in their day. The last thing anyone wants to do is spend all their time paper pushing. And with SDMO, it really allows to streamline some of these areas so that you can do that. Grow and scale on a single platform, um, improve efficiency across locations and sites, and be present where your customers are buying. So with SDMO, because you can manage multiple locations and sites all in one place, your team have the visibility to see locations and sites, inventory, stocking, manufacturing, all in one place without having to hop in and out of systems or make phone calls to do that. Next slide. All right, and so what's really driving criteria today for cloud ERP investment? Functionality and the ability to really be ready for any industry, right? For my business, compliant and secure. Speed, I can get to it from anywhere at any time, have immediate insights and true collaboration. Simplicity, easy to learn, quick to learn, easy to use, I'm sorry, quick to learn, simple to manage. And then flexible, is it adaptable, scalable, and is it open? And so with SDMO, it really checks all of these boxes. And so for companies that are really looking for a solution that's easy to use, but can be scalable over time, SDMO is a good fit for this. All right, so let's hop into the demo. So, all right, so you should actually be able to see my screen here. And first thing I wanted to just pop up was in my screen, and actually this is perfect because it speaks to <laughs> um, something that's a great feature with SDMO. Um, and so with Sage Distribution and Manufacturing, um, the first thing I just want to mention is that new releases to SDMO are done every single month. And so one of the great things about SDMO is they're constantly adding new features into the software. It's released every single month. You do not have to do an upgrade or an update to take advantage of the updates that are coming out. They're automatically pushed to you. Um, you also get these handy reminders that pop up that let you know when a new release date is coming. So you'll see for April, we have it coming out on April 13th. Um, and when you're in the online help, you can see at any point uh, new features based on the release. So in this case for March, I can hit discover new features and it actually walks me through video by video what the new features were. Um, and so at this point, um, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of here, but this online help is pretty powerful. You can read and do a variety of items, but what SDMO really offers that quite frankly, you don't see in a lot of packages these days is the, the ability to have updates routinely done to the software. Usually with most of it, it's a, you know, an endeavor of an upgrade or an update that results in downtime. All of these are seamlessly pushed out for you. So first thing I just want to highlight is I am on the manufacturing dashboard. And so for the manufacturing dashboard, you can see here, I do have a variety of different widgets. Um, and so up at the top, I've got KPI widgets, so have the ability to do interactive widgets, so I can actually interact the data or interact with the data. And then we also have the ability within here to actually do comparative or reporting widgets. And so these dashboards, you can have different dashboards for different users. And so for manufacturing, I may have a different need for information than somebody who happens to do the distribution side of things. And so these dashboards are super powerful in the sense of being able to really give someone real-time visibility to what's going on in the company without having to run reports or to do a lot of drilling. 
Other thing I want to point out is just the navigation and how to move around in SDML. So you'll see with the panels, on the navigation bar, the panels are always just too deep. So now if I go to items, if I need to see things about item data, I can just click on the arrow here and have the ability to see that. And so this allows for easy maneuvering. You'll also see as I highlight my cursor, it tells me where or what each icon stands for. I can also maximize it out and click on the different items this way. So the too deep layering really saves time in terms of you know, moving around within the software, not having to excessively click on a lot of options. Um, so it can be a real time saver with regards to actually moving around. And so first thing I'm going to talk about is under items, and I did cover this in my distribution webinar, but I wanted to make sure to also cover the items in the manufacturing for those of you who might have missed the distribution. And so first thing you'll see is under items, I've got my item list available. And so with the item list, you'll see I have the capability to um, see my different items. I can sort or I can filter. Um, I can also customize it. So for example, I may want to turn on the fact that this is a lot managed item. And I may want to move my stock management checkbox down. And so now you'll see I can do those right here. And I can also do filtering. So if I want to look up anything that has the word chair in it, I have the ability to do that. Now, one word of caution with any of the customization on any of the lists, this is true for everywhere in SDMO, if you set any filters or if you customize your view in terms of fields that you like to see, it will automatically stick. So if I were to go off of this screen and come back in, it would be filtered at chair with the columns that I have. So just a word of caution when you're doing the filtering to make sure if you don't want the filter to stick, you just back it out when you're done. Okay, so in this case, I am gonna look at my 61 series chair. All right, and first thing you'll see over here, I don't know what that's all about is under my 61 series chair, I have my item name, my ID number, which also syncs back to Sage Intact, the category type, and over here I have, if I want stock management, if it's purchased, manufactured, or sold. Now, what's great with these toggle switches is the toggle switches will control the different tabs beneath. So for example, if I were to toggle purchased on, you'll see my supplier and supplier pricing tab show up. If I toggle it off, they disappear. So by virtue of how you set your toggle switches, that will determine which tabs you have available. And that's super helpful for end users so they're not cluttered with unnecessary tabs that they don't need or use um, in the software. So if I click on the management, this is where I can tell an item if it's lot or serialized managed and how to assign the lot number and if I need expiration date as part of this. Down at the bottom for sales, I've got the currency, min quantity, max quantity. I have my units. So for here, I've got my stock unit of measure. I have my sales unit of measure. Now, because purchasing is off, I do not have a purchase unit of measure field. So I'm unable to do anything with that at that time. And then if we click on sites, this allows me to see which sites are being managed for this particular item. So what's great with the sites is you can have different costs. You can have different replenishment methods. Um, so for example, in one I've got by reorder point, the others I've got by MRP. I can also have different required amounts, lead time, safety stock, um, and different bill of materials. So you'll see down at Acme Manufacturing, I actually have a bill set up for this one. So if I click on the more actions tab, or button. This will actually load up my item. So you'll see here's my chair. It shows me my information. If I click projected stock, it'll actually load for me what the projected stock is based on the information that's currently in SDML. So this is a powerful way if I'm trying to see, you know, hey, what am I going to need to get more items or do things with more this particular item, I can actually gauge it from here without even having to run MRP. I also have my valuation method, which we have standard cost, but you can also do average and FIFO. 
If I go to replenishment, this is where I'm telling SDMO, how do I typically want to replenish the item? And in this case, we're doing MRP. What's my safety stock? And since I'm doing MRP, it will not look at reorder point unless, um, well, I guess it would if it's doing raw materials. But for MRP, if it's a manufactured, it's going to be taking into consideration my safety stock number. And when I go to cost, this will actually show me the costs for this item. And so when I hit edit, not only can I see the, the total cost, but SDMO also breaks down right in my screen how much of this was material versus how much of this was labor. Um, and so at this point, for where we stand, this is a pretty powerful tool. Most systems, you can't get this level of detail without either having to drill into a report or go into a different section of the software. And with SDMO, we have it all right here. All right, so I can actually, let's go over to sales prices. So under sales prices, SDMO does have the capability of doing pricing at the quantity level, which is what you'll see here. But I can also do it down to the individual customer. So you'll see I've got special pricing for customer 11022, or 10012, but then I also have just generic pricing based on volume. And so SDMO can accommodate both pricing models without an issue. If I head over to customers, these are the customers that have aliases that are assigned for these guys. And you'll see I can do sales unit, I can do unit of measure conversions, and I can define minimum and maximum quantities based on the individual customers. And this is huge. There's a lot of accounting packages that don't have the ability to do this. Usually you're kind of hogtied to doing the sales pricing, but not really forcing the mins and maxes. And this allows for that. And then for financial, if you are integrated with Sage Intact, this is controlling the posting behavior and how it works with the financials and Intact. And last but not least, if it's a manufactured item, you'll have your manufacturing tab. So this allows me to link into the bill of material and see the bill of material and where it's at. Now for today's webinar, I'm gonna go ahead and actually go to the bill of material, but I just wanted to show that this is possible here. All right, so I'm gonna discard my changes. And now we'll head to bill of materials. And here's our 61 series chair. And a couple of things I want to point out. So once you're in the bill of materials, you're able to see the status of a bill of material. You've got your name, your item, your route. You're also able to see the what we call the main bill. But then you also have the multi multi level bill. So if you're doing nested bill of materials or sub assemblies, what's super awesome with SDMO is you can actually see the multi level right within the bill of material. So I can actually see here I've got a 61 series base assembly. Here's all the parts that make it up. Here's my chair assembly, the seat assembly. Here's all the pieces with that. And what's also great is it shows you the standard costing and the rolled up costs. And normally with most accounting packages that we work with, you have to run reports to get this information or um, you know, have the ability to really drill into the different WIP items. So the fact that I'm able to do all of this just from clicking is great. And then the tracking just allows me to see if I've used this bill and manufactured it, when did I last manufacture it? What was the date, the quantity and the status? And so this is our bill of materials. So now I'm gonna head over to the routes. So your routes is gonna be your labor and your time. What labor and time did I spend on this? And so now I'm gonna to go to routes. I'm gonna to go to my 61 series chair. And first thing you'll see is that really for my, my series chair assembly, the main thing I have is actually just putting the chair together. And for this, I have an assembly operator. And the assembly operator is really two individuals, John and Mark who are able to assemble this chair for me. And so I'll see here, it's the number of resources and I can actually designate down to the employee level who's gonna be responsible for doing that. All right, so now I'm gonna close out and I'm actually gonna head over to sales. Now for the sake of time, I actually added this sales order in already. Um, so I went ahead and I created a sales order. Now this sales order right now is currently a quote. And we'll see this here. You'll see I did my 61 series chair. And what I just wanted to point out here is that in your quoting area, 
you do have the ability to, to drill into additional information. So on the 61 series chair, you'll see I've got, you know, the information related to the item, the number that's gonna be on the sales, the price, the stock, all of the address information. And for stock here, this is actually showing me stock on hand and stock shortage. So when I'm putting the sales order in, SCMO actually alerts me to the fact that I don't have enough in stock to make this item. And so this is great because the person doing the sales order can see immediately that there's a stock shortage and by how much. I've got my address, my delivery information, and then if I have any line notes or things I wanna to add to the customer notes or customer document, I can do all of that here. And so at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna confirm my order. And now you'll see it's been confirmed and now it's set to pending. And now we'll see it's confirmed and it's pending. So at this point, I'm actually gonna pause on this because now I gotta go actually make my chair. So now what we'll do is we're gonna actually run over to MRP. And just for a brief moment, I do wanna talk about what is MRP? Because you hear the term all the time, a lot of people don't actually understand what MRP is or how it even works. And so what MRP is, is the ability to have the system tell you where your shortages are based on open work orders, open sales orders, open purchase orders, um, safety stock, reorder points. And so with MRP, it's really looking at your system as a whole and telling you where your shortages are going to be based on everything that you have in the system. And so this can be a huge time saver because I'm not running multiple reports, trying to figure things out. I'm actually able to go to the MRP calculation and, and work through it from there. So first thing I'm gonna do is an MRP, MRP calculation. Oops, and I went to the results. So apologies, I actually wanna go into the calculation and hit create. And so for here, you can call these MRPs anything you want. I could just say MRP for April 10th. And I could say this is for Acme menu only. And you'll see when I do the MRP, I can pick by company or I can pick by sites or I can do both. So I'm just gonna pick by site. So I'm only interested in Acme manufacturing and now I'm, oops, I meant to hit the explode bill. So hopefully this will give us what we need. So let me just run it again. So the great thing with MRP, you'll see how quick this is. I can run it as many times as I want. So if you go to run it and you forget to click on something, no big deal, you can run it again. And what's great with MRP is you do not need the users to get out of the system. With some MRPs, you have to run it after hours because it takes too long or you have to boot people out of the system in order to run it. You can do all of that with MRP. Everybody can be in and working and it's very, very snappy. And you'll see it's already done. So now I'm gonna open this up. And first thing you'll see is I actually have some suggestions on what I should do. So first thing it tells me is that I need some base assemblies and some seat assemblies. And when I click on the suggestion, it tells me I can actually create a work order here. Um, note, replenishment method will determine what this plus box will do. So if it's production, it's gonna wanna create a work order. If it's purchasing, it's gonna wanna create a PO. So at this point, before I go ahead and put my work order in for my chair, I'm gonna go ahead and purchase some screws. So right from here, I can hit create PO. Now, this supplier, this is the default supplier for Acme Manufacturing for this particular part. You do have the option to override it, but I'm actually just gonna let this stand. And it's suggesting that I order 30, and it's giving me, in this case, a gross price, which means in this case, this particular item maybe didn't have pricing set up. So I'm just gonna say my screw is $1.50. Hit create. And now it's actually telling me that, hey, this has been ordered. So at this point, I'm actually done with MRP. So I'm gonna close out of here. And I'm actually gonna head over into the purchasing area. So we can go through purchasing approvals and also doing a receipt, a purchasing receipt. All right, so see here, I do create, I did create my purchase order. 
notice it's in draft mode. So as long as it's in draft mode, it's actually not ready to be received. So I actually have to go through the approval process. And so now you'll see when I come in here, I can hit submit for approval and I can either select or type the email address of the person I want to approve. So I'm just gonna pick myself and hit send. Now what's happening on behind the scenes this is actually sending an email over to me. Now, because I am an approved approver, I actually don't have to wait for the email or do anything further. I can just hit submit for approval. Now, if I'm an average end user, I would need to wait for the approval to come through in order to be able to do this. And so now I'm just gonna hit submit for approval. Oops. And one second, because it should actually allow me to approve. All right, let me go back out and go back in real quick. Oh, here we go. Now it says pending approval. Um, you can also just refresh. If you're in here and it doesn't update the way you expect it to, if you hit the refresh, that will do it. So now I can hit approve, click approve. And note, it's telling me that I need to select a dimension. So for those of you not using Sage Intact, this would not be an error you would ever see. For those of you using Intact, you do have the ability to map your dimensions. And so in this case, what it's telling me is that one of my dimensions, in this case, my department is not, not filled in. So it does do an integrity check to make sure that you are mapping to your dimensions as part of this. So now I'm gonna hit save. and approve. And now at this point, notice it's approved, now it's pending. And at this stage, right from here, I can go ahead and I'm just gonna create my receipt. And now it's telling me that the receipt itself has been created. And so at this point, if I wanna head over to my receipt and go back to purchasing, go to purchase receipt, and really with the purchase receiving, now I'm actually going in and finalizing this receipt. And I can either do that right from here. Now, because I have um, lot tracking and bin tracking turned on, and for screws, I've got the bin tracking on, I do have to actually tell it where I'm putting the stock. So when you're using bin locations, you do need to allocate the stock to a bin. And so this step that you're seeing me do here is actually allocating it. Now, in this case, it knows that if I'm doing purchase orders, the location by default is the storage bin, but I can also override it at any time if I needed to. And then also the default status is accepted. All right, so now I'm gonna save this off. And when I post, this is actually what will release the manufacturing screws or the screws themselves into, into there. And so notice now I've got my purchase order, I've got my item, and so now it's ready to go. It's been received in, and you can see it says received over on the side. All right, so now I'm gonna actually head in and do a work ticket. So if we head over to manufacturing, I'm gonna do work order. Now note, I could have created the work order from the MRP area, but I wanted to go through the work order screens and show you how to create a work order from here. And so now you'll see I'm gonna create a work order, I'm gonna make it for my site, this is my 61 series chair assembly. And I can tell it if it's assembly only, normal or rework. So you can actually tell it what type of assembly I'm doing. And in this case, I wanna do firm. So plan means I'm planning to do it, but I'm not ready to do it yet. Firm means I'm actually going to do it. Um, with the system, if you have something as planned, that's not really gonna put any requirements against inventory, it's really when you mark it into firm that it does this. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a quantity of one. I'm gonna have the start date for today because we're trying to manufacture it for the order. And now I'm gonna hit create. And so now you'll see right within my work order, I have my total cost, material costs, I've got my operations, I've got my components, and I've got my tracking. So if I've done anything against this, it'll actually show this to me real time. And I do have my dimension. So down here, if I wanna map it to my dimension, I'll go ahead and do that now so I don't forget later. 
All right, so at this point, I've created my work order. I've got my plan cost. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this work order off, but I'm also gonna create another tab because as we go through this today, I'm actually gonna show you how the work order updates throughout our flow. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna leave work order up on this guy. So I'll bring that guy up here in just a second. Close out. Oh, and if you need to print your traveler, you can go here and you can print your traveler and your pick list. So let me just show that very quickly. All right, so there's our traveler. And here's your pick list. So your pick list is usually what your inventory guys are gonna use to see what they need to pull. And here's your pick list here. And these forms can be customized. So if you have a specific way you wanna see your pick list, that can be done. So now I'm ready to actually do some transactions. So with work order, you have a couple of ways to manage your inventory. So when I'm dealing with manufacturers, there's really, you know, two or three ways to handle what happens to the raw materials. Okay, so one methodology with work orders and production management is a concept called back flushing. And what that means is that the inventory as it's being completed, the entry of that inventory item into the system is what triggers the relief of the raw materials. Okay, so the idea is that I'm going to make something, I'm gonna tell the system I made it, and when I tell the system I made it, the system will go through and automatically pull the raw materials that needed to be done. Um, back flushing can be super helpful in environments where they really don't have time to record things real time. They wanna just be able to kind of record it. It's also great for, manufacturing where the bills are pretty predictable um, and or you know you're you're doing bulk production to a point where there's just really not a lot of variation now for those industries where there is a lot of variation the materials that get pulled vary from one to the next then what we really encourage is more of this actual or real-time uh, material tracking and so i'm going to go into material tracking here and i'm actually going to tell it that it, hey i'm going to make a work order and you can do a range of work orders or you can just do one so I'm just going to do my chair here Dude. and then I can hit search now I can leave these all blank and just have the site and it will will do the search okay so first thing you'll see here is it tells me that I do have these items that are on my material tracking. Now, it also allows me to say, well, what got actually used, right? So it expected four and the actual quantity were these numbers. So I can actually interact with the software to do this. Um, now I do have to, because again, I have multi-bin turned on or, or bin locations turned on. I do have to tell it to allocate the stock because it needs to know what bin to get the items out of. So in this case, I'm gonna do four, Notice it defaulted to the location where the item already is. So I'm just gonna hit allocate. Notice when you do this, it does change the allocation status over here and says allocated. You have to allocate your inventory before it's gonna let you leave this screen. If you don't allocate, um, it will actually uh, prohibit you from saving it off unless you tell it that you didn't actually use that item. All right, so I'm gonna say allocate. And notice when I check the box, it, it automatically just says, this is how much needs to be allocated, but I could change that at any time. And so now what I'm gonna do is just save this off. Notice it said four tracking records were created. And so now if I head back over to my work order, notice here for my materials, I've got 100% of 100%. So basically what this tells me is that I'm 100% done Notice my progress, it shows me down here how I've progressed on this work order. 
And it shows me what I plan to manufacture it at and what I actually manufactured it at. So this is super helpful if you're in industries where raw materials can be volatile. Well, then I can really see real time like, hey, this is what I expected it to cost me, but this is what it actually cost me. Now, in this case, we're on the right end of it. It was actually less. So now what I'm going to do is actually head back over. And now I want to put in my labor, my time pieces. So now if I go to time tracking, time tracking allows me to put the labor in. And so this can either be done by a manager or can be done by the individual employees. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick the item and hit search. And now it shows me these are the these are the items that have planned quantity. So in this case, I'm just going to do this guy here. So I'm going to check my box. I'm going to say it was completed. Now you do have to fill in the actual quantity of what you spent. And the reason behind this is that never does SDMO want to assume that what was planned for this item is what they actually make. So I'm actually going to put a quantity in here of one. My actual setup time was 10 minutes, actual run time was 10. And actually, you know what, we'll do 12 minutes so you guys can see what overages look like. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And notice I said it was completed, so that means that I'm done with this step for the time tracking pieces. So now that I've saved it, I can go back to my work order and I'll just close out and go right back in. And now you'll see, I actually have 120 of the 100%, and you'll see my process cost is actually higher than what I had planned. And you can see as we drill into this, my actual times were off for my startup times. And so I'm able to see real time, why did this cost me more? Why did it, it, why did it have more time to it, right? So I'm actually able to see real time that this ran over. So then I can actually start asking questions to my laborers like, hey, you know, what happened here? Why did this run over? Um, but again, I have all of this visible right from within the screen. And so now that I've done my materials and we've done our time, now I can go ahead and do a, compl a completion. So I'm ready to actually make the finished good and put it into stock. So I'm gonna go to production tracking. I'm gonna pick my site. And again, I'm gonna pick my item. And I'm just gonna hit search. And notice I very basic on what I fill in. I just fill in what I need to get my work orders done. You can fill in as little or as much of these fields as you need to. Um, and so now you'll see I've got my work order. It's in progress. I can tell it how many I actually made. Now, if I had not already done the materials and the time, this is where we would do what I had talked about earlier with the back flushing. I can come in here and check to do the material and the time at the same time. But in this case, this, these two steps were already done through prior entries. So I'm just gonna complete this. And now do you have to tell it where to put it. All right, so in this case, we're going to keep it. I'm going to put it in storage. Status is accepted. And then I've got my lot number. And I'm indicating it's a new lot. All right, so I'm going to click OK here. Notice it tells me it's been entered. So now I'm going to hit Save. There you'll see my record's been created. If we come back to our work order, And notice I just hit the refresh button up at the top. Now it tells me my production is 100% complete. So at this point, if I am truly done with this work order, I can actually close the work order. Now, when you do a close, that does mean that you can no longer do any work against this work order. So if you have situations where you may end up doing over completions or you need to issue additional materials, you really wanna hold off on closing until you're done because once you're closed, you cannot reopen a work order. And so now if I go back, um, I wanna make sure that my item actually did make its way into inventory. So I'm gonna to go to stock inquiries, go to stock inquiry here. And we'll see, I've got this pre-filtered, 
or my chair, so you'll see that filtering stuck. If I go to the manufacturing, notice I've now got one quantity in hand. My stock value is the 294.58, which is what we saw in the work order. So now I'm actually ready to go ahead and ship this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to my sales order. And because we're dealing with a lot of inventory, I actually do have to allocate it to the order before it'll be eligible for delivery. So now I'm gonna come into my sales order and you'll see here's my 61 series chair. I'm gonna allocate stock. Here's my item that I put in. And I can tell it one and click save. And I'm actually gonna close out of here for just a second because what I wanna show is on the dashboards, these orders to deliver allow me to see if I have orders that are ready to be shipped. And so once the inventory has been allocated, if I'm not the person that's actually responsible, maybe I'm responsible for putting the items in the box, but I'm not the one that's responsible for creating the shipments, I do have the ability in here to actually create or update this so that this order is actually ready to deliver. And so we should see in here, and sometimes for whatever reason, there's a delay with this, but we should see the, the order appear in here. And then if I check this box here, you can actually ship it right from here. So I'm not sure why my item is not popping up. Let me do start by order date. And Murphy's Law, this thing will pop up after we're done. Um, but that's okay. So I can go ahead and we'll just ship right out from here. No big deal. So for the sales order, you can create the shipment right from within the sales order itself, which if you're responsible for allocating and shipping, might actually be easier to do, but you can also do it from the shipment screen. So since I'm in the sales order, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create shipment. And it tells me that your shipment is created. Now I'm in the sales shipment window and it's telling me that it's ready to proceed. So now when I hit confirm, I'm actually ready to ship it out. Now, if I need to print any documents, I can do that here. So in this case, if I wanted to print the packing list, I could go ahead and click the print button and print the packing list right from here. All right, and so I'm gonna hit confirm. And now the status is set that it's ready to ship. And at this point, I'll just go ahead and post. And now it's shipped and it's posted. So now I'm actually ready to invoice it out. So that actually concludes our demo for today. So just to recap where we went to, we went through our dashboard features. We talked quite a bit about the items, how to run MRP to create work orders and purchase orders. We actually did go through the entire work order process. Um, we also covered bill of materials and how to set bill of materials up. Um, so as you can see, this is a very robust package, but also extremely easy and friendly to use um, and very intuitive. You really find that it's pretty simple to get around um, within the software without a lot of issues. So what are we hearing from people about SDMO? Um, so really what a lot of people are saying is just, it's a great end-to-end -end solution. You know, it's really helping people manage their business and not their software. Um, for a lot of people, it's giving them the ability to retain ties to Sage. You know, for years we've heard, we want an all cloud solution, but you know, Sage 100 and Sage 50, it's just, they're not there. And so with SDMO, we really are now providing a cloud-based um, distribution and manufacturing product. Uh, and what's great with this is that it really is easy to use, easy to set up, and get up and running so no you know expensive implementations um, long training times most users are able to get in and get to work pretty quickly uh, next slide great so if you like this webinar we actually have one coming up on april 23rd for sage intact uh, i do know for may we will be doing another one on sdmo if you enjoyed seeing this webinar we do have and jessica if you want to navigate to our website we do have all of our prior um, SDMO recordings online. You can just head up to our website. It's under, I believe, resources. 
And where Jessica's headed now is our upcoming webinars. But if we go to the resources, and go to recorded webinars, you can see any webinars that we've done in the past. And so if, for those of you interested in SCMO, you can actually catch the SCMO webinars there. All right, well, thank you so much for your time today, and we look forward to hearing from you real soon.